Hello, in this video we are going to look at make two from arrays one in coding battle. So let's start by reading the problem. Given two int arrays a and b, return a new array length two containing as much as will fit the elements from a followed by the elements from b. The array may be any length, including zero, but there will be two or more elements available between the two arrays. Okay, so if we take a look here, um, let's look at the example to make sure we understand it. So the name of this method is make2, and in this case, array A has contains two elements, 4 and 5, and array B contains three elements, 1, 2, and 3. Now what I notice here is that the returned values are just the elements from array A, right there, 4 and 5. If we look at the second example, we have array A contains the element 4, and array B contains three elements, one, two, and three. And so the returned array contains the four from array A, right there, but then it needs to take the one from array B. In the third case, array A is empty, array B contains two elements, and we're going to pull both elements from B. Now what I notice right away here is that the, return, the returned array is always length two, and in fact, this last sentence here kind of is, makes this question a little easier. It says there will be two or more elements available, available between the two arrays. So what that means, and let me get rid of this down here because I, I wrote something thinking before. What this means is I can start off by making an array C of length two because I know that I know that this has to return an array of length two. And I'm going to end this with return C. Of course, if I hit go right now, they're all wrong, but what I see is I always get an array of length 2 that's spat out on each run. Now, this is a good kind of conceptual piece to remember that notice I haven't put any values into C, so by default, the array gets defaulted to 0. Okay, so let's deal with the different cases here. So case 1 is array A has two or more elements. So what does that mean? So how do we write that? We say if a dot length is greater than or equal to 2, then c at 0 is equal to a at 0, and c at 1 is equal to a at 1. So we take the first two elements and we put it into c. And when I hit go now, I should get some cases that are working. There we go. Notice the cases that are working is when array a has two elements. Fails there, fails there, oh, works there. So now let's deal with the second case. Well, the second case is going to be if a dot length is greater than, is less than two, now this is, this is where we have to kind of use some logic. Now if we take a look, there are two situations when the length of a is less than two. There's a situation when the length is one, and there's a situation when the length is zero. And we do different things in both those cases. So instead of just saying here, when the length of A is less than 2, let's deal with each case individually. If the length of A is equivalent to 1. Well, if I have one element from A, that means C at 0 is going to be A at 0. And it means C at 1 is going to be B at 0. Because I'm going to take my first element from my new array from A, and my second element is going to come from C. And sure enough, if I run this, this situation, this test case now works. I take the four from A and I take the one from B. And now let's deal with the last situation. If A dot length is equivalent to zero. If the length of A is zero, we're gonna say, tab right, C at zero is, equiv is equal to B at zero and C at one is equal to B at one. I hit go now. Oh, what happened here? Oh, I put my brace wrong. There we go. That's better. That's why my tabs weren't tabbing properly. I should have caught that. There we go. And I hit go, and I see it works for every case. Now let's take a second and just think about um, some some nice little like coding tricks. So we don't have to worry about efficiency at this point, but let's talk about efficiency really briefly. Each time it comes to one of these if statements, it's going to say if it has to check that condition, and if it's true, it goes in. It has to check this condition. If it's true, it goes in. It has to check this condition. If it's true, it goes in. 
Now we know based on the question, because the question says that there's always going to be at least two elements to fill the, return, the, the array that we return. We know that if this case fails, this case fails, I know that I'm guaranteed to go into here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to modify this slightly and make this an else if, and I'm going to make this an else. And what this does now is if I go into this conditional statement and it executes it, it just skips the rest. So it's not going to check this condition. But if it fails this, it will go into the second one. And if it's true, it will go into this and it will skip the rest. And it means that this last condition, if the first conditions, first two conditions fail, I don't even bother to check the third. I just make it happen. And again, for our problems, you see it still works. And for our problems, this isn't a big, big issue. This kind of efficiency is really important as your problems get really, really big. And we'll look at some more problems like that later on in the course. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Have a wonderful day.